All right, I got a new one. I brought two of them. I had my 16 year old boy who knows more about printers uh, print these for me. This is a stronger filament and I'm sorry, I don't know how much stronger. I'm just sort of playing around here. I've got one in the brake test machine and we'll test them both. I appreciate all the comments where people who know a lot more about this are giving me even some emails. Um, sorry if I don't answer them. It's not that I'm not reading them. I am impressed and thankful to have the feedback. Although I, as Joe said, it's a, it's a choose your own adventure thing. We would never make these and sell them. We would not intentionally market a thing that is meant to break. Okay. It's just like, I just feel like that's on you to figure out a way that you should go in that way, whether it's a zip tie or somebody suggested a key ring. Maybe we'll try to brake test a key ring, um, a little piece of paracord, whatever it is. Uh, I'm just doing this for fun. And I do a lot of things just for fun, just from an inquisitive, curious nature. So let's see if I want to get, I think my last... One broke at 255, was it 255? 255 says my personal assistant. So let's see if we can get past 300. If I could get up to 500 with this stuff, I might use it as a breakaway carabiner for myself. I wouldn't suggest anyone else did it. I don't know how uh, consistent a 3D printer, the thing looks kind of, um, yeah, I don't know if I trust it but I might trust it for myself because when you need a breakaway carabiner, you're already tied into something good somewhere else and you're using uh, this to hold you in position for work positioning on a rotted stem. And your only reason you have it is for work positioning. And if the thing were to break out under you, you want this to fail. So that's the scenario we're looking at. And uh, I guess in summary, thanks for uh, those people who write comments knowing a lot more about this than me. It's actually super interesting to read and this is my response. So again, right at where the threads start. People talked about that in the comments, about how if there's any sharp edge on plastic, that's where it breaks. hinge didn't fail the hinge did not fail the hinge failed on the last batch but right here this yeah. is exactly where the other one where yeah. where'd it go oh right here see yeah so definitely the weak point is looking to be where the threads start the hinge held up though wow we got our highest number today that's cool 408, is that what it was? I so. Yeah. so we're gonna test some of these 3D printed D-rings. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not putting these on the harness. What kind of plastic is this? Um, that's PET G that's been annealed. PET G yeah. annealed. 200 degrees for two hours? Uh, something like that. Go ahead. Okay. One thousand and one. You could tell it was holding on better. This is our machine, Wreck It Ralph. Some of you guys have seen this. We've tested a lot of things. You can see the bone yard here. So this is a little thing Joe made right here. 
that is for mounting our accessory Ds on the harness. These used to be put on with a three bar buckle and it wasn't as strong as this 3D printed gadget right here. And we're gonna test one of these right now. Yep, let's go for it. Here we go. 2453. Yeah. Don't hang anything on your harness greater than 2,000 pounds. Oh boy. Uh, let's see what actually happened because I've been breaking my. No, it broke the plastic. It broke the plastic this time. Yeah. Um, that's not even it though. That's something else. It went everywhere, man. Oh, there it is. Oh no, it didn't break. It didn't break. It bent it. That's uh, that's got elasticity. Annealed PLA. Annealed. Wow. That's got elasticity, man. Yeah. We got a carbon fiber one. Carbon fiber, okay. Well, how how's the webbing doing? Webbing Might not fine. be fair. Let's do a regular PLA to see what the strength difference is. Here's the one that's not annealed. Okay, so it's the same uh, filament, but it's not annealed? Correct. All right. What Joe was saying here off camera a minute ago was this method of hooking our accessory Ds on the harness is just a better way of doing it than the three bar way. It's not about making it super mega strong, although it is super strong. Twelve eighteen. So, so anything in, in that instance doubled the strength of it. So annealing, baking it in the oven at 200 degrees for two hours doubled the strength of this filament. But it didn't break. 1,200 pounds though is still about 1,200 is plenty. Four times stronger than the current three bar buckle we're attaching them with. Yeah. Which doesn't actually break. It just slips out of it mm -hmm. around four or 450. Yeah, and your your heaviest saw you're gonna hang on your harness is what, like 20 pounds? Yeah, and most people aren't even hooking saws on this. This is like carabiners and speed line slings and right. just kind of your everyday accessories. Cause we make a chainsaw lander attachment point, but it's not this. Well, I'll show you guys who are the audience. I'll show you what it looks like on the harness. The thing we're testing here is not a life support system at all. So this is what we're talking about as an accessory. The D-rings, these are just for hanging speed line slings and gear on. That's why they're red. Yeah, this is the old way. Works okay, but it's more complicated to put on. You gotta be able to master the the three bar buckle and you know work it back through not for life support whereas these you just put this through the loop and then you just shove this pin through and it's not only stronger but easier to put on nice and snug you can get these nice and snug too but you got to know how these are a no-brainer what's this one uh, this is a composite PLA carbon fiber. Composite PLA carbon fiber testing. Eleven hundred. All right, what's the next one? This is the same carbon fiber that's been annealed. Okay, just like the last one, only annealed in the oven. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Not much difference there. So I didn't Four. change the carbon no. fiber much to bake it. No, it like like the pet G when you anneal it, 
shrinks up by about, I don't know, five to 10% where this didn't change at all. Um, the PLA doesn't change much either, but. But the carbon fiber doesn't change at all. No. Yeah, so the PET-G, they were the same size, but after annealing, the PET-G shrunk by that much compared to the carbon fiber. Yeah. Interesting. And it's always, like I said, it's, it's a lot stiffer when, you're, when you feel it, but it's not a. Uh, so more brittle too. More brittle, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do we have left here? Let's do these. These are pet G. One and the old one not. Um, I don't know how much longer this is gonna remain accurate. Yeah, we're beating the heck out of the webbing loop here. This loop starts to get opened up and it starts to load these farther out towards the edge, which has more leverage on them. Mm -hmm. What's this one? Uh, pet G just not non annealed. Non annealed Petgy. Go for it. Seven eighty two. So that was eight hundred pounds basically. Okay, go ahead. So definitely improved it. Yeah, so annealing definitely helps the PET-G. So PLA is the winner. It, it gets a bad rap because it's the cheapest a lot of times. PLA. PLA. And um, people always want the thing that's more expensive. But right. it's not necessarily always. Sometimes the simple answer is the right answer. So it's the cheapest and the strongest. Uh, out of these. Yeah. Uh, once you get up into some high heat type stuff, you can get stronger, but. Um, PLA beats PETG and carbon fiber today. So the matte PLA has some sort of non-reflective particle in it that seems to make it weaker. Mm -hmm. like it's not like just the regular plain basic PLA that's 100% plastic. Seems to be pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Well, it won today.